What's the word, y'all? All right, so John Collins got traded like three days ago. I'm the last person to talk about it, but I, I still got a lot to say. And if you were wondering why um, it took me so long to talk about it, because I was, I was doing other stuff, and it was cool, and I was on location, and I'm finally home. So let's talk about John Collins getting traded from the Atlanta Hawks to the Utah Jazz in exchange for Rudy Gay and a second-round pick. Obviously, John Collins has been on the trade market for about three seasons now. And they went from a team that was asking for packages similar to what Donovan Mitchell got in his trade, which was a bunch of first-round picks and young talent, and one of those young talented players ended up being an all-star this season, to now trading him away for practically nothing, uh, trading away for Rudy Gay, who they don't know if they're going to keep, and a second-round pick that is a second-round pick. A lot of the times, these second-round picks that are attached to these trades don't even convey, because it's like top 58 protected, but it's just something for the fans to not get too riled up about. Well, I don't know. If you're an Atlanta Hawks fan, are you really that upset considering it has been Three years on the market. Now, with this trade, the Atlanta Hawks opened up like a $20 million plus dollar traded player exception that they could potentially use in the next couple days because free agency starts in about 24 hours as I'm recording this video. But this type of deal might be changing the landscape of the NBA. And I don't mean that John Collins about to go to Utah and not a contender or whatever, but now because of this thing, the second apron, stuff that we've talked about a lot over the last couple months since we found out what it was. But because of the second apron, some of these extensions that we've seen from years ago might be getting moved to teams that have salary cap because you don't want to be near the second apron whatsoever. And if you're not completely sure what the second apron is, don't worry, I got you with this um, quote from Mike Sky. The NBA will revoke their taxpayer mid-level exception. They'll be barred from signing players on a buyout market during the season, and they aren't able to trade for more money than they send out. They also can't trade picks seven years out, and these are for the teams that exceed the second April. And the teams as of right now that are basically at that spot are the Clippers, and it's the Golden State Warriors. A lot of people believe that this was put into play to get more player movement so that we don't really have dynasties, but there's more parity in the league. I know some players across the league like Draymond Green hate this idea, and some people really love it. There are teams that are dangerously close to it, like the Bucks, like the Celtics, like the Suns, like the Lakers, teams that are competing. And the Atlanta Hawks were a team that was pretty close to that second apron. So they looked at their roster. Again, this is a new guy in charge over there, so it's no longer Travis Slake, but instead it's Landry Fields. He looks at their roster and say, hey, we were competing for a playing spot, and our roster is, is this expensive? I don't know if it's worth it. So we see teams making a bunch of trades over the last couple of weeks, and how many of those trades do we look like or we look at and say, that team got adequate value for the talent? A lot of the trades that we're seeing right now is not talent-based when we're talking about what is being received. It's cap flexibility at the end of the day. And that's what the Atlanta Hawks just did. And I'm assuming there will be more teams, not just this offseason, but next offseason that do similar things. And for teams like the Utah Jazz or for teams for these, these markets that don't really get a chance to sign top-end talent, this is kind of a blessing for them right now because the Utah Jazz has got a talent like John Collins for practically nothing. Now, it is an expensive talent and a talent that has been like this over the last couple seasons, but at the peak of his powers, he's averaging 20 points per game, 10 rebounds, shooting like 40% from three. Like, that's the best version of John Collins. And you look at it and say, hey, this is a, a cost that we can afford because we weren't going to go out there and sign a big name player in free agency and we have to spend some of this cap. So let's go take a flyer on John Collins and if it doesn't work, then that's okay. And if it does, we can flip him later down the line or he becomes a part of our core. A lot of people are talking about the fit between him, Lowry, and Walker Kessler. That's not extremely important to them, I, I would imagine. Will Hardy showed in that first year that his fluid offense can run a, a plethora of different lineups. I mean, we saw Lowry... We saw Kelly Olynyk and Walker Kessler play real legitimate minutes together, and it wasn't bad. We saw them post-trade that line not have one real point guard on the roster. Wasn't that bad. Will Hardy's an up-and-coming, a really good coach, and if anybody's going to figure it out, it's the young guy. And it's the team that's trying to build something after being sellers just one offseason ago. So now a lot of these contracts that we saw being given out to solid players, but not the best players, might be getting moved. You're going to see a lot, a lot of rumors of people that still have three years left in their contract at a decent amount. Well, that's why we see DeAndre Hunter still. You're going to see Carl Anthony Towns because he's making a bunch of money. Rudy Gobert is making a bunch of money. Anthony Edwards is up for an extension soon. J.D. McDaniels is up for an extension soon. That team is about to get really, really expensive, and they don't have a lot of success to show for it. So you're going to hear a bunch of rumors. Jordan Poole was moved for a bunch of different reasons. But flexibility in the future is one of the main ones. Hey, he's promised four years, $140 million. 
We're going to trade him away for this Asian dude that only got one year left on his contract because we want that future flexibility, whether that is to keep the core together of the big three that has ran a dynasty over the last couple seasons, or think further down the line. The Pelicans are on the brink of being really expensive with their three 30-plus million dollar players in Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum, and Zion Williamson. We already saw some rumors around some of those dudes. I already mentioned like DeAndre Hunter as another example of this, but we're probably going to see a decent amount of rumors and a decent amount of movement because also this free agency class is not ridiculous. The best players in it are James Harden and Kyrie Irving, and so we kind of have an idea of what's going on there, even though there's rumors this morning that Kyrie Irving is going to be taking a meeting with the Phoenix Suns. Th th that This right here, Kyrie, oh, this is about to go on a tangent. Kyrie can change the whole landscape of the future of the NBA. Where Adam Silver and company, and there's a new CBA that was just signed, where Adam Silver and company are going to be shaking in their boots if they could get a player of Kyrie Irving's caliber to be like, you know what, I'm willing to take the minimum amount of money and go to a team and make it a super. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, at the end of the day, the athletes are always going to go for the money. Like, we do see pay cuts, like James Harden took a pay cut to stay in Philly last season. But for the most part, his pay cut won, oh, I'm worth 40 million, I'm going to take a minimum. It was, I'm worth 40 million, I'm going to take 32 ish. The worst thing that can happen for Adam Silver, for us fans, I idea what it is. But for Adam Silver, is to see more players end up being in the, in the NBA for a decade, making a lot of money, whether it be through the NBA contract endorsements and all this other stuff, and then feel, and when they're still in the peak of their powers, be like, you know what, I don't need NBA money no more because I still got this other stuff. Kyrie Irving just signed to an answer. Kyrie got shoe deal money. Kyrie had Nike money. Kyrie had max contract after max contract. He don't, maybe in his mind, he don't necessarily need another max deal. So let's go have some fun and, and build a super team. Like, like if Adam Silva sees that, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. But it has been a players-driven league for some time now, so we'll see exactly what happens. Getting back to the Atlanta Hawks and, and the John Collins deal, I don't know what to expect. I've read a couple different outlets that expects them to use that traded player exception. I've read other out outlets that don't expect them to use it at all. I've heard a Pascal Siakam conversation with them. Like uh, They could go a lot of different ways, and part of that is because they got a new guy in town. And a lot of times when these, these teams hire new general managers, it's very similar to when you get a new owner. You got Matt Ishbia go to the Phoenix Suns and say, hey, I'm going to trade for Kevin Durant. Oh, I'm going to trade for Bradley Beal. Oh, I might sign Kyrie Irving because this is the direction I want to go. And the same thing happens in a gen with a general manager. You inherit a team that's nothing like the team you want to build. Travis Slank built this Atlanta Hawks team. It's cool. But me, Landry Fields, I don't really like DeAndre Hunter. I don't really like Clint Capella. I don't really like this piece. So I'm going to make a lot of different trades. So that's why I'm saying it's hard for me to grade it right now or even ever. Also, every trade don't need to be graded, ladies and gentlemen. But it's hard for me to take it at face value without knowing what's next. You know what I'm saying? If they use that traded player exception to get even better, then duh. But as of right now, it was just kind of, we wanted to trade him away for three seasons and we finally did type move, you know? You know, free agency starts tomorrow. We're doing a free agency stream on the Through the Wire YouTube channel. We are dangerously close to 300,000 subscribers over there. So if you're interested, pull up for the beginning of free agency. But we'll be live reacting to a lot of stuff. Uh, I am also still on tour, so July 9th in Las Vegas, so if you're going to be a Summer League or you're a Vegas native, uh, I'll put the link in the description, ttwtour.com, it's completely free, doors open at some time, that's on the website, I don't remember, uh, just come in and show out, and we are planning to have a special NBA guest, I can't tell you who it is, because I don't even know who it is just yet, but it's somebody, at least that's what they're telling me, alright, let me know if you're going to pull up, and uh, yeah, yeah, whatever.